Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Welcome to the story of Jacob, Esau, and struggles with God. If you sum up Jacob's story, God and family play two big parts. Jacob's family, like so many, struggled just to get along. His twin brother, Esau, got so mad he wanted to kill Jacob. So Jacob fled to his relative Laban for safety. But Laban tricked Jacob into working for him for 20 years. And when Jacob became rich anyway, Laban's sons complained that Jacob took their wealth for himself. What a mess. In the midst of family trials, God offered healing and hope far beyond Jacob's imagination. First, Jacob was learning the hard lesson of humility. Then, God's mysterious plan unfolded. God's family was about to get a new name. This would be the family that God uses to bring Jesus, the Savior, to all people in the world. So, as you fall asleep... May you find peace knowing that God's Spirit heals divisions between family and friends. Just come in humility. And remember, if we walk in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleans us from all sin. Now commit today's tasks and worries to God. Soak in His presence and get comfortable. Just close your eyes and relax. Breathe in the unity of God's family and release division as you breathe out. Drift off to the land of dreams, just like Jacob. And if you fall asleep before I finish, all the better. God is present with you even while you dream. And listen now, as I begin our time, with an opening prayer. Dear God, fill my heart and mind fresh with your presence and your peace. As I sleep, may your Holy Spirit guide my dreams. Just give me courage and humility, just as you gave it to Jacob. You blessed him and were faithful to him, and I believe you want to bless me and be faithful to me as well. So now, renew me as I rest in you. Amen. Now I want you to imagine Jacob's life through his eyes. You grow up watching over goats and sheep wandering through springs and mountain forests. But you love to stick around home with your mom, Rebecca. Imagine her smiling at you as you run through the yard. She is old and has been as far back as you can remember. She thought she couldn't have kids, and your dad, Isaac, pleaded with God to have children. Your dad was 60 years old when you and your twin brother Esau were born. Your brother Esau's name means hair. He has thick hair like fur covering his neck and arms. I want you to imagine feeling Esau's prickly arms as you wrestle with him in your yard. Your father loves Esau. In fact, he loves him more than you. Esau is an outdoorsman, a hunter, who adventures the rocky crags and hills to find game that he brings home and roasts over open fires. Smell the savory meat that he cooks for your dad right now. You're jealous, knowing your dad will smile at Esau and tell Esau how proud he is of him. Now, your name, Jacob, means deceiver. You cringe sometimes when your mom and dad say your name. Why would they call you Jacob Deceiver? Jacob, your mom calls out. 
you come running to her side. Listen, she whispers. I just heard your dad ask Esau to go out and bring him some wild game. Your dad said, make me a delicious meal so I can bless you with God's blessing before I die. Listen, Jacob. Go get two goats, and I will make your dad's favorite dish. Take it to him so he'll bless you instead of Esau. Your mom wants you to trick your dad before he dies? She loves you. She wants the best for you, even if it might make a whole new mess. So you go out. You pick out two young fat goats, and your mom cooks your dad's favorite meal. Then you even dress in your brother's clothes and cover your arms and neck with the hairy skin of a young goat, your mom then hands you the steaming plate of meat. Feel Esau's rough shirt on you. Just itch your neck on the hairy goat skin. Hold the plate to your nose and smell the roasted meat. You've taken pretending to a whole new level. You walk into your dad's room and set the food next to his bed. Feel his arms as he gives you a giant hug and squeezes your arms. He's almost blind, but still he hears your voice and senses that something is wrong. Are you really my son Esau? he asks. Yes, 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 I am, you lie. Listen as your father gives you a blessing that you've wanted for years. May God always give you huge harvests of grain. May many nations serve you and bow down to you. May you be the master over your brothers. When he's done, you leave quickly, just before Esau gets back. Esau then hears that you stole his blessing. His cries echo across the homestead. No wonder his name is Jacob, Esau hollers. Now he has cheated me twice. Soon, your mother calls for you again. Jacob, she says, listen, Esau is planning to kill you. Get ready and flee to my brother Laban. Stay there until your brother cools off. When he calms down and forgets what you've done to him, then I will send for you to come back. You immediately flee from your family which is deeply broken now by lies and jealousy. Can God heal a family like yours? Can he use someone like you, Jacob, the deceiver? Well, keep resting here for a moment and breathe in trust in God. Then breathe out and release your worries. Breathe in and let the Holy Spirit fill you with faith. Just rest now in God's arms. So now 20 years have passed, and you're now heading back home and must deal with Esau. The angel of God came to your dreams and told you to go back home. See God's angel now in your dreams. Hear the angel call out your name. You're camping with your family. Your 11 sons run around your camp on the hillsides, Hear your boys, Judah and Reuben, laughing. Watch Joseph skip past you, smiling. Just reach down and give Joseph a hug. Tell Joseph to follow God's dreams for his life, just like you're following God's dreams for your life. Then your Uncle Laban arrives. Oh, he's mad at you. What have you done? Laban says. You tricked me. 
You've carried off my daughters like captives in war. But the funny thing is, you didn't trick Laban. He tricked you. Laban tricked you to marry his daughter, Leah. He cheated you with wages and animals. His sons accused you of stealing his wealth, but you didn't steal a single thing from them. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye, Laban declares in frustration. I have the power to harm you. But last night, the God of your father said to me, Be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. What can this mean? Did the God of your dad, Isaac, just show up to Laban and tell him not to say anything, good or bad? Is Laban trying to trick you again? What is my crime? you ask. So he kisses his grandchildren and his daughters and blesses them. Then he leaves in peace. Now once again, you must face Esau. You send messengers ahead to him, saying, Ask him if he's fine with me coming back home again. When the messengers return, you get frightened. We went to your brother Esau, they say. Now he is coming with four hundred men to meet you. (laughs) Four hundred men? You are afraid and distressed, so you pray. O God of my grandpa Abraham and God of my dad Isaac, Lord, you said to me, Go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness that you have shown your servant. Save me from my brother Esau. I am afraid he will come back and attack me and Leah and Rachel and my children. You told me, I will make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. You decide to send gifts ahead to Esau, hoping to appease him. In humility, you seek the approval of a brother who once planned to kill you. How will Esau respond to the gifts? Will he still hold his grudge, or will he forgive you and restore your friendship? You pray for your family to live in peace. Rest for a moment and breathe in that same spirit of trust from God. Then breathe out and let go of any earthly thing that you're clinging to. Just breathe in and let the Holy Spirit fill you with peace. Rest now in God's arms. You spend the night in your camp alone. Tomorrow morning, you will see Esau. You were alone 20 years ago in a place just like this when you fled from your brother. You had nothing but a staff and rested your head on a hard stone for a pillow. You dreamed of God's angels coming up and down a staircase from heaven to earth. Remember that once again now. Watch the angels again, going up and coming down from heaven. God stood above the angels and said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather, Abraham, and the God of your dad, Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are laying on right now. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your children. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised I will do through you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. What could this mean? What great work 
could God be doing through your children to bless the whole earth? You are no longer alone. A man has entered your camp. Where did he come from? How long has he been watching you and following you? He says nothing. You don't know what he wants. But the two of you suddenly begin to wrestle. You struggle with each other. Feel your hands lock with his hands. Feel your chest and head knock against his. You have struggled your entire life. Even from the womb you wrestled your brother, who you must struggle with tomorrow. Now, through the night, you continue the struggle, wrestling, shoving, being shoved. But this man does not overpower you. You pass the deepest, darkest part of the night. In faint starlight, you know what you want. You're not fighting this man to beat him. You're fighting for his favor. You want his blessing. The first glow of morning begins to show on his face. Suddenly, the man touches your hip. You feel the socket of your joint wrench in pain, but still you don't let go. Let me go, the man says. It is the start of a new day. I will not let you go, you say, unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asks. Jacob, you say. My name is Deceiver. Then the man says, Your name will no longer be Jacob the Deceiver. Your name will be Israel, which means he struggles with God. You have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. What does this name mean for your family, for God's family? Do we struggle with God? Then the man blesses you. You realize that you are staring into the very face of God. How does he look to you? How does it feel to be blessed by God? Then suddenly you look up and see Esau approaching you with 400 men. You bow down before him, humbly. You surrendered yourself to the will of a brother who once plotted to kill you. But yet Esau is running to meet you. He throws his arms around your neck and kisses you in a huge embrace. You hold your brother tightly and weep. At last, he loves you, and you love him. You tell him, When I saw your face, it was like seeing the face of God. For you now, what's it like to see the face of God? You, now, named Israel, have struggled with God and been blessed. So pace your breathing now as you continue to listen to the Word of God, as it's prayed over you softly in this continuing time of peaceful relaxation. Just breathe slowly and deeply as you listen to God's word for you. Just breathe. Just imagine. Just dream. You can lie down and sleep soundly because the Lord will keep you safe. Welcome to the story of Elijah and the single mom. Trouble. Trouble can walk straight into your day and leave you anxious. Well, Elijah and the single mom fell into troubling times, too. They faced hunger and sickness, but their faith and prayers helped pull them through. God turned their lack into plenty. He transformed their anxiety into peace. 
faith in God can turn your worries into peace too. So as you fall asleep, may your heart be renewed with love for your true source of peace, your Father in heaven. Now leave behind today's tasks and worries and just soak in God's presence and get comfortable. Close your eyes and begin to relax. Breathe in God's peace and breathe out your troubles. Just begin to drift off. And if you fall asleep before I finish, all the better. May God be present in your dreams tonight, too. So listen as I begin your time, your voyage into sleep. You're drifting into the arms of Christ as we pray. Dear God, fill my heart and mind fresh with your presence in peace. As I sleep, may your Holy Spirit guide my dreams. Give me faith, just like you gave faith to Elijah and the single mother. You are faithful to them, and I believe you'll be faithful to me as well. And now renew me as I rest in you. Fill me with trust, O Lord, and increase my faith, just like you did with this single mother. Make me strong for tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, imagine a campsite long ago on the distant edge of Israel, far, far away from busy cities. It's far from the palace and from the foul king, King Ahab. Elijah the prophet is hiding by a small brook all alone. He has just told the king that as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. So Elijah is not too popular right now. He is away from his home and his friends after hiding for days and months. Then the drought begins. See the hillsides around you as it turns from lush green to parched yellow, and then from parched yellow to dusty, ashen, white. Each morning, birds with deep black feathers fill the bright blue, cloudless sky. The flock of ravens brings Elijah breakfast. Commanded by God, they come with bread and meat for his breakfast. And they return in the evening with bread and meat for dinner. Let this picture of the ravens remind you not to worry. Consider Jesus' words. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. God used ravens to bring meals to Elijah. God will provide for you too. Soon the blue creek at Elijah's camp stops babbling and becomes puddles of mud. But then the puddles dry up too, leaving only cracked pockets of dirt. All of this is happening because some of God's people are making poor choices. King Ahab and Queen Jezebel had rejected the God of Israel to serve foreign gods. They built temples for these foreign gods, and when that made God angry, they continued to fight God's people and killed some of his prophets. By God's command, Elijah told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Now, Elijah's brook is dry. But God still doesn't want to send rain. Rather, he tells Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sadun. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So now Elijah begins to pack up his camp and leave Israel for a foreign land. In faith, he hopes that a single mom will feed him. A poor woman with no husband and no food, that is God's plan to feed Elijah. Rest for a moment and breathe in that same spirit of faith that God gave Elijah. 
and then breathe out and release your fears about tomorrow. Rest now in God's faithful, loving arms. Elijah goes down to the coast, to Zarephath, by the Mediterranean Sea. Many hungry and hurting people live in villages on the path. Elijah knows that the rains will come soon at his word, but it isn't time yet. The sky still shines cloudless over the shimmering blue sea. Elijah arrives at the gates of the village. He sees a woman gathering sticks. Her face is worn Worry lines are etched into her eyes, her cheeks, and her hands. Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? Elijah asks. He hesitates a moment. Um, bring me a bite of bread, too. <laughs> the woman looks irritated. I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in this house, she says. I only have a handful of flour left and a little cooking oil. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. Oh, don't be afraid, Elijah says. Go ahead and make a little bread for me first, and then use what's left for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will be flour and olive oil left in your containers until God sends rain and the crops grow again. So she does, as Elijah says. Rest for a moment and breathe in that same spirit of faith that God gave this single mother. And then breathe out and cast your cares to Jesus. Rest now in his arms. Elijah, the single mom, and her family eat their fill for many days. There's always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised. As the single mom stands inside the house, she thinks how crazy this is. Years with no rain. A strange Israelite staying in her house, claiming to be from God. But there... On the shelf is food. A clay pot is filled with flour. An oil tops out the glass beaker. The water pitcher is full. Imagine what her home smelled like as she baked fresh bread. Just see the joy on her family's face as they all eat together. Weeks pass. Every day, the jar of flour stays full. The beaker of oil and pitcher of water overflow. Elijah eats, and then the mother eats with her son. Her son's thin body slowly becomes strong again, and the color returns to his face. Until one day, when the color drains from his face again. Something bad is happening to her son. She bakes bread, but he can't eat it. Day after day passes like this. She moves her son into her room beside the kitchen. She watches him overnight and tries to nurse him back to health by day. 
She bakes dinner and comes to get him to eat. But she notices his hands are gray and stone cold. The single mom grabs her son's hands. They feel cold and clammy. She squeezes his lifeless fingers, and then she panics. Elijah hears her tears. Man of God, what have you done to me, she says. Have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son? She holds her lifeless, wilted son in her arms. Give me your son, Elijah says. He takes the boy from her arms, tucks the lifeless head against his old chest. He heaves the body up the ladder to his room and lays the boy softly on his bed. God, why? Elijah asks. Why have you brought such agony to this widow? She opened her home to me. Why would you cause her son to die? Elijah stretches himself of the boy's cold body and calls out again to the Lord. God, he prays, please let this boy's life return to him. Again, Elijah prays, God, please let this boy's life return to him. Elijah stays next to the boy, praying and waiting. He has waited on God many times in the past, for long periods of time. He will wait again. A third time, he calls out, God, please let this boy's life return to him. Another moment passes, but this one is different. Color starts to appear in the boy's cheeks. He sputters out a few blasts of air from his sunken chest, and then he opens his eyes. He's alive. Elijah picks up the boy and carries him back downstairs to the kitchen and gives him to his mother. Look, he says, your son is alive. His mother has tears of joy. It's natural to cry when you witness something truly miraculous take place. Now I know, she says, that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Now may God's word fill your dreams. As you rest, may you be blessed by the living God that transforms. May the Holy Spirit guide your dreams. Let me pray now for you as you fall asleep. O peaceful and loving Father, be merciful to this one, O God, because of your constant love. Because of your great mercy, wipe away their sins. Wash away all evil and make them clean from their sin tonight. Tonight, let them hear the sounds of joy and gladness. Create in them tonight a pure heart, O God. Give them again the joy that comes from your salvation. God, grant this one peace so they can sleep soundlessly and awaken with a renewed spirit ready to face the day ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Now pace your breathing as you continue to rest in the presence of God. Just breathe. Just imagine. And dream. With your eyes closed, just dreaming, see this story through David's eyes. You are a shepherd boy. You watch over your dad's sheep, the brown, spotted, woolly sheep, bleat lazily and wander across a grassy field. The warm sun falls on your cheeks, making you dreamy. You see one of your dad's servants coming across the meadow, and he calls out and tells you to go back home. Maybe you'll get the afternoon off. 
you follow the trail home and find your dad and your brothers sitting outside. Samuel, a famous prophet, sits with them. When he sees you, his old, frail body stands up to honor you. He gets a fancy horn and lifts it up over your head, and he pours oil over your hair and forehead. You feel the soothing oil on your face. David, Samuel says, you will be the next king of Israel. See your dad's eyes sparkle with wonder as he hears this. How does it feel to be honored before the people that you love most? Years pass. You serve King Saul fighting in wars. You play a harp for him and sing songs when he feels ill. You become best friends with his son, Jonathan. But still, King Saul is convinced that you will take the throne from him by force. So you leave and flee across the country. Your friend Jonathan wants to help you. He comes looking for you, and when he finally sees you, he gives you a huge hug. How does it feel getting a hug from your best friend? Don't be afraid, he tells you. My father won't lay a hand on you. You'll be king over Israel, and I will be second to you. Even my father knows this. You and Jonathan agree to help each other. God is your witness. Your best friend will help you. So just drift into dreams as you ponder how that feels. Continue to rest for a moment. Just breathe in and know that you are never alone. Let the same Holy Spirit that filled David fill you now. Just breathe out and release your worries. Rest now in God's arms. Weeks later, you hide in the desert. You stand at the mouth of a cave and look down at a steep, dry ravine and up at the rocky crags on the wall. A large group of men have joined you here. These men are distressed. Many of them owe money. Most are discontent. And all of them want you to be their leader. You want to help them. You tell them that the joy of the Lord is your strength, and it can be their strength, too. You hear shouts and heavy footsteps in the ravine. King Saul is here with his army. You and your men go quietly back into the cave and wait. You touch the rough, rocky cave wall. You're packed tightly with dozens of poor, distressed men. Hush, you whisper. Someone enters the cave. It's King Saul. He stops and turns his back to you. He finds a spot in the faint light and prepares to go to the bathroom. Your men think that this is your chance to get Saul. This is the day that God told you about, they whisper to you. God told you, I'll give you your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. But you don't want to hurt Saul. You want to be faithful. So you creep quietly through the dark cave toward Saul. As you get close to him, you see his robe on the ground. This is your chance. You take your sword, and you cut off the corner of his robe. Then you move back into the darkness. Did you do the right thing? You just snuck up on King Saul and cut up his robe. Why? You feel sorry. Your men tell you to attack Saul and kill him, but you won't. God forbid that I should do such a thing, you whisper. I won't lay a hand on him, for he is God's anointed. Your men look disappointed, but you know that you've done the right thing. You watch Saul leave the cave, praying for the trust that God will deal with your enemy. So rest and breathe in deeply. Trust that God will deal with your enemies. Just breathe out and release any frustrations you have with others. 
sleep in the perfect peace of Jesus. You hold the piece of King Saul's robe in your hand. The material is soft and beautiful. Dream as you feel the king's robe in your fingers. Though the king's robe is wonderful, the king is not. You know that you must face him now. So you walk out of the mouth of the cave and call out to Saul. My lord the king, you say. Saul turns and looks at you. You bow down and lay with your face on the ground. You ask King Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? Today you've seen with your own eyes how God delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some of my men urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hands on King Saul, because he is the Lord's anointed. Look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but I did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hands to show that I'm guilty. I haven't wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May God judge between you and me. May God avenge the wrongs you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. Saul listens to everything you say. Then he simply asks, Is that your voice, David? My son? King Saul starts to cry. He hunches over and weeps softly. You're more righteous than me, he says. You've treated me well, but I've treated you badly. You've just now told me about the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Amazing! Saul wants your kingdom established. You trusted God to deal with Saul, and now Saul is asking God to reward you. How does that feel? Saul looks at you anxiously. Swear to me that you won't kill off my descendants, he says. You won't hurt his family or his descendants. You give Saul your word. Why would you hurt the descendants of God's anointed king? You are safe and set to become the next king. You have shown favor to Saul's descendants, and God is going to show favor to yours, too. Your descendants will bless the whole world. Jesus, the Messiah, is your descendant. He will save you and all of God's people from their sin. You can lie down and sleep soundly because the Lord will keep you safe. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Turn away from evil. Do good. Seek peace. Pursue peace.
Cast all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Sleep and wake up refreshed, because the Lord will protect and care for you. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you. Quiet. Return to the safety of God's Word, the centering Word from the Holy Spirit. Let it buffer you from distraction. Rest. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. And let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, to which indeed you were called, and be thankful.
stay. In peace, you will both lie down and sleep, for the Lord alone will help you rest, abide, and dwell in safety. A time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace, and a time for slumber. Salvation has come to you. By God's grace alone, through faith in Jesus alone, salvation is yours. Rest there. God's presence will go with you, and He will give you rest. The Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Strive for peace and for the holiness so that you may see the Lord. You are united with God by faith. Enter His place of rest. Remain in a Sabbath rest. When you enter the rest of God, you also find rest from your work.
Keep your mind stayed on God, and you will find perfect peace. Your faith is firm, and the Lord gives you perfect peace. He is forever your mighty rock and comfort. Rest in God and you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. The effect of God's righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. God is everlasting. He is present. In His presence you find rest, peace, and strength. Fear not, for God is with you. Be not dismayed, for He is your God. God will strengthen you. God will help you. God will uphold you with His righteous right hand.
Your name is written on the hand of God. He knows you. He cares for you. You were always in his thoughts. Just rest there. Peace. Peace to the far and to the near, says the Lord, and I will heal you. Heaven is God's throne, and the earth is His footstool. Let this, too, be your place of rest. Your faith is firm, and the Lord gives you perfect peace. He is forever your mighty rock and comfort. Return to the Lord so that He may return to you. He is slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. Come home to Him. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace when you make and pursue peace. God satisfies your weary soul. He replenishes you.
agree with God and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. The Holy Spirit is present and caring for you. The Lord cares for His own, even while you sleep. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you, God's peace I give to you, not as the world gives peace, but God. Let the centering word be a pillow for you, cool, soft, comforting, directing you back to God. Rest now. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world, so find peace. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. The Lord and the Spirit are one and the same, and the Lord's Spirit sets you free.
May mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in Jesus. He is preparing a place for you. He is preparing your heart to be with Him. No need to keep carrying your heavy burdens. Jesus has taken them. Jesus gives you rest. Jesus is gentle. He is humble. Rest now in Jesus and find his rest. Even when storms suddenly strike around you, Jesus sleeps soundly. So can you. Rest now with the peace of Jesus. Come to God and rest a while. Come to him so he can give you rest. Jesus is gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Be at peace. Show peace. For blessed are the peacemakers.
rest without a worry, and sleep soundly. but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be anxious or fearful of wandering thoughts. Just let his arms welcome you back, cradle you. Rest now in his arms. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let your thoughts be thoughts of love, of faith, of hope, of rest, and of peace. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in Jesus, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you.
the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh. When your way pleases the Lord, He makes even your enemies to be at peace with you. Fold your hands and rest in the presence of the Lord. Lie down and do not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Our Father in heaven, like you sent your Son into the world, send us now into the world in the power of your Holy Spirit, as ministers of reconciliation and ambassadors of your kingdom. As we go, please bless us and keep us, Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lift your countenance upon us and give us peace. In the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, amen. We hope this meditation brought you peace. To listen to the full collection of biblical bedtime stories, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store.